Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time. I'm glad you could join us today. And what we're going to be doing now is start to go through our online ECG coding reference guide. Okay, so thousands of you already have access to it. But what I want to do here is not only show you how to get access if you don't have access, but we're going to walk through each aspect of it. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of lectures that follow, but I really want to make sure that we use this not only as a reference, but you also understand what we're putting there. Now, what you may notice is that these areas can be updated. Okay, so you may be watching a lecture and you may see updates that aren't there. Know that because we constantly want to improve the material, there may be some edits, okay? Whether it's more videos or more examples of the codes that we are going to show. So those of you that don't have access, let me show you how to get access so you can follow along. So what you want to do is go to one of your search bars and put in this address here, okay? So that whole thing, or you can go to www.ekg.md, okay? And search for our coding reference guide there, okay? You can probably go down to the bottom and you'll see it there. But the best thing to do is put this um, URL in, and then you'll come to this page, you'll put your email address in, so type it here, submit, and then you'll get an email after you submit it, confirm your email, and then you'll get access, okay? And once you get access, you'll get this area, okay? So as you can see, there's 10 different parts here that we're constantly updating. And what we'll start here in the beginning is with part one, okay? Part one with the general features and P-Wave abnormalities. So that's how you get access. All right, so again, go to that site, put your email address in, submit, check your email for access, and then you'll have it, okay? And you only have to do that once. All right, so that's how you get access. Now let's get started. So the first thing we want to look at here is a normal ECG, okay? And if you pulled up the coding reference guide, you'd see this, all right? And you have that press example, and you'll see this example of this ECG here. So let's walk through what is a normal ECG, okay? Because it's really important to understand normal, and a lot of your teachers will tell you this, and it's true, because then you can start to pick up some, on some abnormal findings. So with normal ECG, you want to have a normal rate, okay? In normal rate, we mean ventricular rate or atrial rate, okay? So in this case, the normal ventricular and atrial rate in adults is between 60 and 100 beats per minute, okay? The normal rhythm is sinus, and the normal axes that we'll discuss uh, will follow, okay? So if we look here, we can tell that our rate here is so we have a regular rhythm, okay? So notice our R to R intervals from here to here, that's the R to R interval. These are all the same throughout, okay? So we have a regular rhythm, okay? The rate, if we were to find it, okay? We can simply count our QRS complexes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay? So maybe uh, 11, so you would do 11 times six, so the rate is around 66, so within that normal limits, maybe a little faster, about 70 or so, but this is within normal limits. Do we have sinus rhythm present? Well, in sinus rhythm, okay, you tend to want to see those P waves that are upright in those uh, lateral leads, so here's an inferior lead that you see these upright P waves, okay? Same thing in lead one, Okay, and over here in the precordial leads, you can see these P waves that are showing up there as well that are upright. And then you have these inverted P waves present here, a little hard to see in AVR, okay, but they're present there. So uh, this is certainly sinus rhythm, okay? If you look down here, you have one P wave for every QRS complex, okay? So no drop beats, that's one thing you should note. And notice that in that lead V1, all those P waves look the same. You want to have similar morphology of these P waves throughout, okay? Same thing here in lead two, in this rhythm strip, generally the same P wave morphology, no drop beats, and every P wave has a QRS complex. Now, in terms of the normal axis, when we look here, the ventricular axis, okay, if we were to just find the axis here, should be, we're dealing with an adult patient, between negative 30 and positive 110. So this area is normal, okay? And if we look here, lead one 
is upright and positive, so lead 1 sits here. So we're going towards lead 1. Lead A to the F is down here and positive. So our axis lies somewhere within here, which is normal, okay? I'm not going to go through all the each step in finding axes because we have lectures how to determine axis, rate, and so forth. I just want to be able to touch on what is a normal EKG. So normal axis here, it's upright in two as well, okay? Notice that you have uh, normal PR intervals, okay? So normal PR intervals between 120 and 200 milliseconds, and that's certainly normal here. So remember the PR interval, this is the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave is between from the beginning up until here. So normal PR interval, the QRS complex axis we said is within this range, which we saw, and the duration of the QRS complex is less than 120 milliseconds. So from beginning to end is normal. <clears throat> so remember, 120 milliseconds for the PR interval, for the QRS duration, okay, less than 120 milliseconds. Okay, remember 120 milliseconds is three of the small boxes. Uh, the ST segments, okay, should be isoelectric or at least less than one millimeter of elevation or depression. So the ST segment is at the end here. So this would be the ST segment. So if it's elevated or depressed, it shouldn't be more than one millimeter in the limb leads, okay? Normally, we don't want to see ST depression in the precordial leads. And then in terms of the T waves, we just see them upright in those uh, leads as the ventricular uh, wave is heading that way. So notice lead one. These are upright T waves and lead two as well. Uh, V3 through V6. So here's V3. These are upright T waves. V4, V5, and V6. Okay. And they have what we call a normal asymmetric morphology. Okay. So that's something you should keep in mind. Notice that they have that slow upstroke and more of a steeper down slope. So if I just, if you look here, you'll notice that. So again, just to recap, this is a normal EKG. There's no abnormal findings uh, that are significant or alarming here. So normal rate, sinus rhythm. So this is a normal sinus rhythm, normal axes, both P wave and the QRS axes we saw are normal. Uh, the, remember the normal P wave axis is um, within here. So again, normal rate, sinus rhythm, normal axes, okay? The normal P wave axis is between zero and positive 75 degrees, okay? And that's what we see here. Same morphology and sinus rhythm. The PR interval we said was normal. The QRS axis we saw was normal. The duration is normal. The ST segment is pretty much flat, okay? No elevation or depression that was significant. And then the T waves we looked at were upright, normal, and an asymmetric morphology. Okay, so this is a normal EKG. Uh, really keep this in mind, and I'll just take all this off so you can get a good picture of that. Okay, now again, if you have the reference guide, you should be able uh, to see this. Okay, uh, and that's what we have there. So this is a normal EKG. Keep that in memory. As we go through, we'll start to see more abnormal findings. All right. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay. So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? 
and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.